Hello, welcome to the channel. It's Dan here, Watch Me With Watches, and I have an important question. What would happen if you had a Seiko SKX and you had it make babies with a Citizen Fugu? Well, you'd have some kind of hybrid crossbreed, gorgeous love child as it turns out, with this amazing Heimdaller. Now, what's amazing about it is, is that hybrid of the two watches, SKX case and bezel, etc. And then you've got that lovely dial, full loom dial that looks like you got from those citizens of old. Does it work? Is this watch good overall? Does the build quality back up that looks and specification? These are important things to know if you're gonna consider buying one of these quirky watches, because Heimdall are a bit hit and miss sometimes. Is this a hit or is it a miss? Let's find out. Stats and specs next, and then we go into more detail. So there's a crucial statistic I just missed from the stats and specs, and I need to bring in my good friend, Gipas. If you're new to the channel, Gipas is a trusty friend of the channel who assists with the weight of the watch. And this has been sized up. And I have an average man's wrist size. So you know, ballpark figures is gonna weigh quite a lot. It's 179 grams, so it's a bit of a weighty beast. But anything less than 200 is okay. 150 is ideal for most people but you're gonna notice this on the wrist, but that's gonna be standard for a fully stainless steel watch with a stainless steel bracelet, quite a chunky case, and an automatic movement is pretty standard. It's got a relatively thick bit of crystal in there and that adds weight as well. I'm gonna start with things I've noticed straight away when you get it out, and I think it's an attractive watch. I really like this dial design. I know it's obviously a plagiarism to a degree of a Fugu dial, but it's got, instead of Citizen, it's got the Shark, which is a bit of a mishmash of br uh, branding you get with Heimdall. Now, Heimdall is a, one of the gods of the sea, and it blows the Galahorn just before Ragnarok. And then you've got a Shark on the dial, and these are often nicknamed Sharkies. But effectively, you've got an amalgamation of bits. The beauty of having a watch with an NH35 movement, and this kind of case, you can create your own brands really. I mean, you can go, well, I could just stick that kind of size dial on my watch, put a different set of hands from the bucket of bits that you've got knocking around at Heimdall, throw it all together and go, here we go. This is the new watch. That's kind of how these watches are thrown together. So that's why I think this is a success to a degree because it's tried and tested, case design, tried and tested, dial design, hands as well, different to what you'd normally expect on this model. So it's, there's definitely a bit of inbreeding going on there. And instead of it being a mutated person, you would be terrified to see. So you've actually got something that has worked. It's come together. I think visually very well. It's not perfect. I think there's a few things that would have been a bit better. Maybe aesthetically a black date wheel, but then I think maybe that wouldn't have worked because they are harder to read. I definitely think it should have had black hands rather than these brushed and polished silver ones because uh, it's difficult to see sometimes. And I think it would have helped if they were just skeletonized. They don't need loads of loom in there like they've got. They just need to be see-through. And the loom of the dial effectively creates that contrast you need to read the time with the hand. So a little bit odd, but again, we're looking at a 160 pound watch here. So these are the kind of compromises you're gonna get. While we're talking about the loom dial, something I've noticed is, yes, it's good, but it's not excellent. It's not as good as my fully loom dial on my Lumibrite Loris I used to have. I don't have it anymore, I sold it because I've got to keep vlogging watches to keep funding buying new ones. But this isn't as epic as you think it would be from an homage company that often have very good loom for this kind of price point. It's good, but it's not stunning. Running very well in this one, actually, while we're talking about the movement. If running at plus two average, I put it in four different positions. A criticism though, whilst we're talking movement related-ish, is this screw down crown. I know it's gonna be tricky with gloves on to a degree, but this designer crown guard has always been tricky, but it's not helped if the crown, when it screws in and out, especially on this specific watch, is not very easy. It's actually a little bit tricky to get it to bite properly. And so that's one tactile thing, which is a little bit squiffy and a bit tricky, but let's talk about the bezel action. 
that's always something you can gauge the quality. Let's see the alignment first. That is good, not absolutely perfect. Probably half a mil to the right if I'm being ultra critical. Actually, while we're here, the pip at the 12, the pip within that triangle at the 12, is slightly too far to the right. But anyway, we'll go back to some more bezel related things a bit later on, but nice grippy bezel. It feels a little bit unrefined. And by that, I mean, it's got a positive action. It's quite consistent feel, but it just feels a bit too notchy, if you know what I mean. It feels like there's tiny bits of grit in there. It's hard to describe other than that. It just, it just feels a little bit too stiff. It's just slightly different to what I have actually experienced on an SKX. It looks the same, but the actual SKX is not quite as grippy as this. This seems to have a slightly more gnarly edge to it, but it isn't rough, but it has better grip. It's got a good sound to it, actually, for while we're talking about bezel action and bezel sounds. Really good polishing on here, actually. Really smooth, almost like glass. Really lovely, and the contrast between the polished elements and the brush is extremely good. Normally, there's scruffy bits around here where you get the you get a bit of over brushing or over polishing going on. I can't find any there. There's very minimal play with these end links, which are solid, which adds to the robustness of the strap and how it feels. And while we're talking about the strap, I'll just say it's got these push pins, which are okay. They go in and out very easily. Definitely what you expect at this price point. And this clasp is actually very nice, really good quality, but it's pretty much the same as the clasps that you can buy for about four to five pounds on AliExpress. And they've obviously had it branded, but I've had experience with these clasps and they are very good indeed. And this fits very comfortably, this watch. It's about a two mil taper on this bracelet, very minimal. And that's probably explains why this weighs so much because there's lots of metal going on. It's very nice, chunky beast of a watch. And the all brush look, apart from the polished sides, works really well with the polished sides of the watch. I think it all seems to be uniform. It all works very nicely. You can get this also with a Jubilee style bracelet. I can't find any fluff or dust anywhere under the dial. The AR coating isn't too garish. As you can see, a slight purpley blue hue on there. Sapphire's got a beveled edge on there, which is nice. Very much, again, like what you'd get on a Seiko. So it's got that feel of a Seiko, but being a lot less money. Still has quality control issues, but very minimal bit like a Seiko, but then you've got that amazing loom dial, which is so much fun. I do like this index at the 12. It almost looks like the Transformers logo. Transformers. That's just paying tribute to what you get on the Fugu, but it does look really smart. The other thing I wanted to show you, which I forgot earlier, I've mentioned the issue with that bezel uh, pip there, but the machining on, especially on the 10 here, is not very good. It's a bit sloppy. It's a bit like they used a slightly dull drill bit when they were milling that out. <laughs> best way to describe it and the paint filling isn't always very neat or very good and I'm always this is a personal thing I'm always a bit unsure of a fully polished back apart from the little bit of itching and brushing and that bit there but these scratch up so quickly and easily I think they should just do brushed case backs to be honest it's not worth it and as we're going super duper loom on this watch it would have been quite cool if they'd bother to get the loomed bezel inserts which you can get for this kind of case size and this kind of skx insert why not go for the full loom as well and I think I mentioned already Black hands would have been better and different hand design. But seeing it's an NH35 powered watch, you can buy NH35 hands. And if you're a bit of a dab hand at modding, check out one of my vids if you haven't. You can change the hands out and you could put the, the perfect hands for you on this watch. You could even change that bezel insert as well if it's you know not ideal, it's a little bit scruffy. You could get a loomed one. So that's the cool thing. This is like a modder's watch as well. You go, well, this is almost there. Let's do a few upgrades. So in summary, I've kind of covered everything that I think you need to know about. Really good fun. And if you've had fun today in my review, I would really appreciate you enjoying more, hopefully. Check out my other videos, links up here. If not, I'll hopefully see you in another one in the near future. Bye for now.